Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. This is Jim, the Keys Bartender. And if you're not familiar with the Keys Bartenders podcast, let me hit my little banner here. It's a show about life in the Florida Keys and bartending. During the month of December, we are going to be doing the 12 drinks of Christmas. We're at the third drink. And I'm contractually obligated because it is Christmas. I I don't know if that's exact use of the word, though. I don't. I'm not contractually obligated. I'm obligated to mention this one drink because it's so ensconced and wrapped and surrounded by this, the eggnog, the eggnog, eggnog. I don't think it does, determines an eggnog, but even though I've drank it, I've had it, I pretended I liked it. It's one of the grossest drinks you can have. And I'm going to go over some of the ingredients. I'm going to do it real quick. It has... Egg yolk, milk, whipping cream, uh, granulated sugar, nutmeg, and you top it off with a little cinnamon sometimes. You could put either rum, whiskey, bourbon, brandy, vodka. You could put almost anything in there you want. It's a singularly unique drink when you think about it. And... I'm going to go straight to this instead of giving you ingredients on how to do it or proper measure, which you can go and seek it because I don't want to get involved in that. The best way to do it, my advice, is to buy the mix. So when the hospital has to pump out the stomachs of your guest, that they'll have a concise list of ingredients on the back of the carton. And most times when you buy a half a carton of a half a carton, a half a gallon of eggnog, Tomorrow, the next day, you will have a little less than a half a gallon of eggnog. And I'm going to leave it at that. I'm sorry if you get pissed off that you really like eggnog and stuff like that. Listen to the guy that had a problem drinking. I've never gotten shit-faced on eggnog. It's just not one of my things. And the reason why, if eggnog was really great, it would be available all year round because they have eggnog flavored milkshakes and all this stuff. And that's the reason why they don't offer it all the time. Just like the McRib sandwich, it seems like a good idea, but they don't always offer a McRib sandwich because it tastes like McShit sometimes. Just my opinion. Over the last uh, week, you know, we are in the holidays. It's the first quarter of it. I'm going to have to really rush through some of those drinks and, We're going to do a little wine presentation for, I think I'm going to be uh, doing the mulled wine preparation. A mulled wine is a spiced wine, but I also have uh, a special presentation I want to make by showing people how to use a wine key, but that'll be on another episode. I want to talk about what happens to a lot of times with bartenders, not just in the keys, almost any place else that you work at, any place that you work at, that you cannot know everything that's going on all the time. It's going around you, especially when you're the busier bar you're in. You can get a general feeling that some people may not do be doing well. Last night, I had someone, he seemed like he was in a little emotional distress. He volunteered that he was having problems with his marriage. And he went all over the place. He suggested that he might want to hurt somebody. And I spoke to him. I'm not, this isn't patting on the back. It's just that I felt, I said, do you need to speak to somebody? Do you need, uh, it sounds like you're having problems. He mentioned that he was, had a strong religious background. I said, you know, the things that he said about hurting himself or someone else, I said, it doesn't seem to be in line with what you profess your faith to be. So I said, you know, okay, I'll be happy to help. I told him about a place. If you're, if you're feeling you're, you know, perhaps drinking too much, maybe, maybe you have to seek some professional help out. So I said, I can help him. With it. But the guy, guy said he was all right. And he left. Now that brought to mind some other incidents I've had. I had incidents where people were at the bar and they're drinking a lot. And you can tell that they're Uh, sometimes a remnants from an earlier shift. One particular instance, I had a regular who was 
uh, there for most of the afternoon. I had showed up. He still had two drinks in front of him, two drinks that were bought for him previously. And the people sitting next to him, there were two women. And he was engaged in a friendly conversation with them. Uh, just little friendly, snarky comments going back. And eventually, towards the end of the conversation, a man sat neck in between the drunken regular and the ladies. And there was another regular on the side of the drunken regular, an older one. So got regulars, regulars, one guy, two ladies, right? Well, I'm in the midst of my happy hour and I'm making drinks, putting drinks out and stuff like that. And I'm making sure everyone's fine. But at a moment, I, I hear an altercation. I look up. I see the lady in question standing. I don't see one hand. The one hand is holding a cell phone next to her head. I see her turned facing the drunken regular. And she says, what did you say to me? I can't believe you said that to me. Blah, 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 blah. My voice again, louder, louder, louder. And I go over in, in, in between them. I said, sorry, I'm, what happened, this and that. And I heard a lot of things going on, a little shouting. But it seemed like the people around everyone caught the gist of it. I was just on the outs of it. So the two ladies were leaving to go to a social engagement. And they intended to come back. So I said I'd see them later. They had their they had their seats still waiting for them at the bar. They were going to come back in an hour and a half. I assured them that the gentleman that was in question, the problem, one that he will be gone by then. So after they had left, I found out that the guy was trying to talk to the woman who had the, uh, her cell phone up to her ear, and she was ignoring him because she's in the middle of a call. But he took it as a as a slight. And from everyone around him, I get the same story. It says, sorry, but you're fat. Yes. So that really turned out bad. The, uh, the lady was very upset. And I was going to find out how upset she was when she came back like two hours later. Well, there's a gentleman sitting next to the same drunken guy. And he doesn't seem too happy. But then again. There's seats all around the bar. I ask him if he would like to sit somewhere else. Sit somewhere else. He says, no, he wants to sit there. So he sends a drink to another woman across the bar. And he proceeds to order food. And he ends up eating. And he has one other drink. Now, during that time, I see that he's conversing with the drunken guy who had called the other called the woman fat and I hear her them going back and forth but I don't hear anything too hostile something I really particularly have to take notice to so I'm finishing up the business that I have going on at the bar and I get I make sure that he has everything he needs a food to drink and all that and then at the end I present a check and when I take payment for the check I notice he's unhappy and I say, sir is there anything I could do for you it seems like you're not upset. And he proceeds to go to town on me, explaining how the guy next to him was annoying and it was my fault, blah, 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 blah. And I default to, this is me, the people pleaser. I'm sorry. I'm sorry that happened. I'm really sorry. And each time I say that, the gentleman in question, the one that's upset about the drunken fellow, gets more angry. And I noticed that. And then I say, well, I guess it apologize. He's not going to work. I say, well, listen, I, I apologize for one thing. And he goes, what? For apologizing. I realized this. First of all, I offered for you to move. You had the opportunity. Number two, you had the opportunity to say something to the guy, which I'm glad you did. But you also had the opportunity to say something to me and tell me that this guy's annoying you and could I do something about it? And he said, I can handle it myself. And I said to him, and this was the one thing maybe I would suggest not to say to someone. I said, well, obviously you couldn't because you're yelling at me now when you did everything that you didn't do anything 
that could have curtailed that other than giving me a hard time. And I said, I, you know what? I feel a bit responsible. But as you can see, I've got other things going on. I, I am sorry about that you feel that way. And perhaps it seems as if you're in the same age group, group as I am, that you've ran across this before. And this is not unusual when you're sitting at a bar. So I just left it at this. We are useless. It is controlling the chaos that goes around a bar is useless. But sometimes it's hilarious because last night I had that issue with the gentleman. I said the one that was breaking up with his wife. I had two women come in. Uh, they were around my age. They come in. I ha hand them menus. And they go, no, we're just going to be drinking. One woman has a water and the other starts asking me questions about cocktails. Now, prior to that, someone just came to ask me if we have live, live music. My coworkers and I were checking our calendar. It turned out we didn't have any live music in the calendar. And I'm telling the person that asked the question if we have any live music. And I said, no, we don't have music. And he says, I go, and the guy asked again, are you sure you don't have live music? And I said, well, it's not in the counter. He says, because that guy looks like he's setting up a drum set. And I look, and it's one of our bands setting up a drum set. And I said, well, you know, I'm in charge of the social media. So I normally post with a lot when a live band's here. So I didn't know that. And I am sorry. Yes, it, is, it appears as if we have live music. So I get the information from the person. They give me a, an ad that I can put on our site. And this is 45 minutes before before they start. It's about 6.15 or 6.30. And they're going to start at 7. And these two women that came in, the one has the water and the other starts asking for drinks. The woman asked for a drink. Now, this is where it starts getting interesting. The lady says, I want to have one of your special specialties. What's one of your specialties? So, well, I can make almost anything. It's like a bartender is saying, I just don't make these eight drinks. I can make hundreds of drinks. And she goes, I just want to know what your specialty is. And I said, well, here's a list of eight drinks that we listed. And I'm happy to make them or anything else that you want. So the lady's there and she has another couple that was sitting, that's sitting next to them where the women were that got any altercation with the guy, that guy's gone already. So the women say, um, the woman says, I'll have a margarita with Grey Goose. And I said, you want a margarita with Grey Goose? So you want a margarita with vodka? And she goes, what? I said, you want a margarita with vodka? And she goes, well, what do you normally put in? I said, well, normally tequila goes in a margarita, but I can put vodka in a margarita. That's no problem. This is exactly what I said to the lady. And I said, it just doesn't taste the same. Because, you know, vodka has a different taste than tequila. And so it's not really, it's kind of like a vodka sour with a little Cointreau and lime juice. And she goes, well, okay, make it with Absolute then. And I said, once again, that's a vodka. So you want, and she goes, well, okay. How about make it with a tequila? I said, okay, well, we got about eight different tequilas. She goes, well, what do you normally make? It with? Well, I make it with this well tequila right, right down here. And I lift it up and it says something like Tostados, even though Tostados is a, is a flour corn chip or corn chip or whatever, stuff like that. Um, it's, it's, it's one of our well brands. I said, you want this? And she goes, yes. I said, okay, well, now that's a margarita. So we got that. That was five minutes in to her looking at things, trying to figure out what a margarita with uh, vodka or margarita with tequila. So her friend who's drinking the water takes her cell phone. And maybe I have it right here. It's probably, I don't know if I, a cell phone of a cell phone thing. But here, I'll hold that up. Here we go. You see that ad? It says, the catch presents shipwrecks 6 p.m. to 10 p.m. 
You see that. Just remember that. Now that emblem is our restaurant. And that's right there is the name of the band. And there's a picture of the guys in the band. Okay. The lady shows this to me. She says, the one that's drinking the water, where's this place? And I said, uh, the catch? She goes, yes. I said, you're in the catch. She goes, well, no, no, that's the music. It's, that's today, today's date, December 3rd, which was yesterday. And it says 6 to 10. It's 20 of, 20 of 7, and there's no music on I said, well, the music's set up. It's, it's right over there. And the singers are sitting and eating over on this side. So they, they'll be up. It's just the wrong time to set up. She goes, okay. And then she goes, are you sure? We're in the right place. I said, that's the band Shipwreck, and we're the catch, and that's where it's going to be. So that doesn't end there. Matter of fact, she does the same thing to another couple across the bar, ask them where they are, what this place is on the advertisement, and she goes, well, it can't be the place because it says six to 10. And she says, well, the bartender told you it's going to be seven o'clock. And there's those people right over there. So at this point, you think the lady would have gotten a pretty much a good idea of what the lay of the land is. And then she goes and asks another server. And besides the other server, she um, starts Googling out front of the building looking for the address and then she starts talking to one of our bussers and she says she's looking for the ship she's looking for the restaurant shipwrecks now there is a restaurant shipwrecks but there's no band playing there that night and they were looking for the band that was on the advertisement and she thought the band was called the catch because she found the name of the the restaurant. So she got convoluted. She flipped everything around. And then I said to her, she goes, I know that there's a restaurant called Shipwrecks and that's where I need to go. I said, okay. And that's where I'll see the band. I said, no, you will not see the band. The band Shipwreck is at the catch. Shipwrecks may have a band, but it's not the band that you want to see. So they ended up going up to uh, shipwrecks. And I know that they went up to shipwrecks because they get a phone call around uh, eight, a, a quarter of eight. And someone there says, did you have a, a pair of women come in and ask for a band? I said, yes. And I told them, did you tell them they were supposed to be at the catch? Yes, I did. They, they, I told them they were at the catch. Well, they seem to think the band's there. And I said, well, is that, you mean at your place? And they go, yes. And they said, because it said our name on it. I said, nope, that's the name of the band. It's Shipwreck and your Shipwrecks. And they go, oh. And I said, yeah. Yep, it happens a lot. Well, I'd like to thank you for listening. Just remember there's people, there's no controlling the chaos around you, but sometimes you can just sit back and you can enjoy it. This is Jim the Keys bartender signing off. Take care and have a great day. Until next time for our fourth turn of Christmas. Christmas. Bye.